Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, likes, comments, and subscribes are appreciated as they do indeed help with the algorithm. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. At the moment, at the time of me making this video, the cryptocurrency market looks absolutely fantastic. The entire market is in green except for uh, stable coins because that's just how stable coins work. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin tests $48,000. Ethereum steadies while Dogecoin rallies. It is evident that Bitcoin is trying to push above $50,000 either today or sometime during the course of this week. The news that we had last week was that if Bitcoin could sustain itself above 42000 and then $45,000 by the end of a day, then therefore the bull market run would be back in full effect. And that is currently where we are right now. It's not that Ethereum is steadying. It's more like Ethereum has gone up by 20 something or other percent over the course of a six day period. It is currently up by one or two percent. So it still looks absolutely fine, especially after all the movements that we've been having. And Dogecoin is, I think, the 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 biggest up right now. I think by 20 or 30 percent, but that was because of a lot of nonsense that happened over the weekend. Uh, basically, it was, I think, Mark Cuban and Elon Musk were tweeting each other. Uh, about all this stuff about Dogecoin. And then people were saying that uh, Mark, I'm pretty sure it was Mark Cuban, uh, was, I think they said he was shilling Dogecoin. And he was like, no, I'm not. But you could tell by the last couple of days that he has an affinity for Dogecoin. And on top of that, where's the other tab? It says, why Ethereum, why Ethereum see another liftoff? Okay, that's not English. Why Ethereum could see another liftoff if it's able to hold above one crucial level. It's basically where it is right now. If it keeps on rising at some point, it's going to eventually skyrocket. A lot of people are looking for the previous all-time high. I don't remember exactly what the number was. I was I was chatting with my friend before, and he looked at me like I was completely insane because I was like, yeah, like when Ethereum was $6,000, and he was like, e Ethereum was never $6,000. So I don't remember exactly what the number was anymore. I think it was 4000 something. I think we were near 5000 I don't remember anymore. The fact of the matter is, it was very high. A lot of people are waiting until we get back to that number once again. And there's a lot of price predictions, which I don't have on the screen or in here in general, uh, where people are saying by the end of this year, they're expecting a $10,000 or a $12,000 Ethereum. There's a lot of like five years from now as well, which is kind of odd. I don't know why those are all popping up right now, especially as it's five years away and no one knows exactly what, no one knows what's going to happen to the cryptocurrency space this month. Let's be completely honest, nonetheless in five years, but there's a lot of like Ethereum 50k, 75k, and 100k in five year kind of news. Yeah, that's all the price news. There was nothing really else except for uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin news, and some uh, Dogecoin stuff kind of thrown in there. And without further ado, let's move on. For those of you who missed the excitement, Cardano is targeting the 12th of September for smart contracts to go live as part of their hard fork. The team behind the Cardano blockchain has finalized the date for its highly <laughs> anticipated smart contract rollout. According to the latest announcement from Input Output Hong Kong, the team developing Cardano, the smart contract launch will be executed with a hard fork dubbed Alonzo on the 12th of September. They said it's happening, period. We're targeting 12th September 2021 for the Alonzo upgrade, bringing smart contracts to Cardano via a hard fork combinator HFC event. Fantastic. The launch of the smart contracts on the proof of stake blockchain will allow for the launch of dApps covering use cases like DeFi written in an in-house programming language known as Plutus. In a video stream, Nigel Hemsley, that name sounds very fancy, head of delivery at Cardano confirmed the update. He said, we are rapidly moving towards the hard fork on the mainnet. Our engineering and test teams are working extremely hard to make sure components are updated and ready for the Alonzo release. So yeah, we have an actual date. This happened about a day or two ago, give or take. Uh, I guess you can call this news I missed if you kind of want to do that. Probably not. Um, yeah, so we have an actual date. I think the time that we were given before was by the end of this month. Who cares? It's an extra 12 days as long as it ends up happening. I think this will be finally one of the most, uh, the word isn't rewarding, uh, breathtaking, though that also doesn't really breathe a sigh of relief. I can't think of the actual word for that one right now. 
Uh, because we finally have the update for Ethereum, and we're finally getting this update for Cardano. I think any update news after that will not be as fantastic or celebratory uh, for a while until we get the, uh, the the Ice Age thing going on Ethereum. But yes, um, this is why you may have noticed Cardano was going up for the last couple of days. I'm expecting, just realistically, about a good, f I give it a good week or two, maybe a week of Cardano's price. It's kind of going sideways, you know, people not really caring, air quotes, if you will. And then as we get closer to this date, I, I expect the price to go completely insane, probably trying to aim for a $3 Cardano because that's just what makes the most sense in my head. Anyway, that's the Cardano news. We finally have a date for the upgrade. And let's move on. In this is super popular news and shouldn't have been this popular news. Intel, the computer processor giant and world's largest semiconductor manufacturer, disclosed to the US SEC that it has purchased 3,014 shares in Coinbase. The shares are worth around $787,000 at the time of writing, based on the current Coinbase stock price of $261 per share. Intel's disclosure notes that the shares were purchased before the end of June. Barron's reports. Yeah, that was correct. Barron's reports that Intel could have acquired the shares before Coinbase's direct listing began in April. But since the stake in the crypto exchange is so small... It went well under the 5% threshold that would require Coinbase to report it when it went public. Intel disclosed the investment to the SEC as it holds more than $100 million in total investment as a public company. So the news is, is that Intel has bought Coinbase's shares. That's basically the news. I'm not even joking. Here's the actual um, Intel Market Watch page. And then if you scroll down, you see the actual SEC filing right here. And there's the top of it. And then you continue going down. As as far down as I can scroll is around... Yeah, you should be able to see it. It says it right here, Coinbase Global, uh, that they bought their shares. So, woo! No one should be surprised. All these, all these tech companies, they're not oblivious to what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. I told you this before. When you don't assume that they're simply just buying cryptocurrencies and being like, well, this is it, guys. Let's, let's, let's wait for the next 15 years to see what happens with Bitcoin. They're buying multiple coins. They're making sure that they have a stake in nearly, realistically, every single cryptocurrency-esque company, also the ones who are mining as well, you know, because that's how you hedge your bets. You kind of go through the entire thing as opposed to just one simple investment. Um, so yeah, that's the Intel news. This was incredibly popular. Everyone was like, well, does this mean that Intel's in the crypto? Of course, Intel's in the cryptocurrency space. It's just simply that they haven't announced something openly doesn't mean that they're not into it. So cool. Don't know if that got anyone's uh, motor revving, but, you know, in, Intel now holds some Coinbase stock, which means that they're using Bitcoin, which means that they're probably investing in Dogecoin, which means that they have a rocket that's going to go to space to catch that car that Elon Musk sent into space that's holding Dogecoin. See how far you can stretch it? Pretty gosh darn far. Anyway, that's the Intel news. And let's move on. Also in, sure, why why not? Gene Simmons, the bassist and co-lead singer of the band Kiss, revealed he is a huge supporter of cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. He has also invested a few million in the asset class at the beginning of 19 and is now a hodler. During an interview with CNBC, one of Kiss's co-founders said he joined the crypto craze at the beginning of the 19 after an educational conversation with Tyler Winklevoss. Okay, sure. At the time, he allocated a few million into Bitcoin. After the discussion, uh, when its price was trading around $10,000, the basis who has significantly increased his portfolio after the initial cryptocurrency investment said he enjoyed B <laughs> almost said BTC's. BTC's rally <laughs> to its all-time high price in the middle of April. He admitted that he is a hodler and that he will stay in the market for the long run. I mean, at this point, why would you think of leaving the market? He said, I love the ride. To, I loved the ride to 65,000 and I am what's called a hodler. I believe in the long run, end quote. Uh, Simmons, uh, I guess he's also known as the demon. I just know that I'm pretty sure he's the long tongue guy unless I'm forgetting something. I don't know the band that well to call him the demon, but sure. As his fans call him, forecasted that the primary cryptocurrency would continue its price appreciation. 
by the beginning of 2020, it would trade between 55,000. I don't think he understands prices that well because I'm pretty sure within the next month and a half, Bitcoin's going to be already above 60,000. But bless his heart. The Rock Legend even revealed he would allocate more money into it. Oh, that's fantastic. He said, I'm all, I'm all in. I'm putting more in. And he's 71, and there's a photo of him on stage happy because he just bought more Bitcoin. Oh, apparently he also said, I believe in Ethereum. I went in at 900, now it's more than 3,000. And then he's on stage being really happy. So the news is, is that, first of all, this isn't the first time that we've had this news, but I guess recently he was recently re-re on CNBC. And now we know that he still loves Bitcoin. So we can all sleep a, sleep a sigh of relief. I don't know. Uh, knowing that the guy from Kiss also has crypto. I mean, I was confused. I mean, I, I was not going to invest unless I knew he was in it. But here we are. So I can now throw more money into the market. Anyway, that's the Kiss news. Let's move on. Next up, in one of my favorite news stories, Sergei Shevsov. Bank of Russia's deputy chairman has thrown his weight around Bitcoin. What? This time warning Russian investors against betting on the asset, which he believes is a pyramid scheme poised to tumble, going under with investor funds sooner rather than later. There's there's so much to unpack. And just in that one sentence, I mean, I could I could make an actual entire video on that. Interviewing with Reuters, the former soccer player, what? And they made him the the deputy chairman of the bank? Ooh, and top banker who seemed oblivious of various accommodations, a, a, a com- what? Approaches by central banks around the world towards digital assets asserted that Russian bankers, brokers simply did not provide access to crypto assets. Instead, citizens use the internet. I'm not understanding any of that sentence. He said, in this sense, it is not very clear who will conduct the testing, and we unfortunately do not have the ability to protect our citizens when they purchase products from foreign providers. Do they not know how the internet works? The crypto skeptic called on investors to only invest in firms that had been licensed, assuring that they were safe uh, since the central bank had control and oversight over them. And I'm sure some of you just chuckled over that. Pointing at Bitcoin, he warned that the bank was unable to protect the person who used the services of an unlicensed provider, arguing that there was no way to introduce the very mechanisms that were aimed at protecting the interest and preserving his money. Should I read any more? I, I, I feel like... He said, therefore, buying the same Bitcoin, a person enters a minefield. Okay, I think we're done. So the point is... um. I love news like this because they know that they're lying. Uh, we know that all these central banks are absolutely terrible with money. Uh, the amount of, dare I say it, corruption amongst, first of all, this is not the only country on the planet that has that. But between all of them, it's just absolutely insane. You must have seen documentaries or a TV show or a CNBC, ABC special at some point where you know about all these things that are going on. And the idea that the only way that we should be able or one should be able to use Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies is through a company that's been licensed through the government so that we know that we can. So, yeah, this was quite popular news about a day or two ago. Also, some news I missed. We keep getting a lot of news like this, and I'm and I just assume it's them. It could be a lot of things. It could be them being like, hey, you got to watch out because cryptocurrency is evil. While we know that the banks are also buying it as well. One of the one of the head uh, chief of investment something for the Bank of Russia like two years ago uh, slipped and, and announced that the, that the that the country was also buying Bitcoin. And then the next day he was like, I don't I don't know what a Bitcoin is. You can look it up. It's really, really weird. Um, and also just for reference, here's their inflation rate. And I just like to throw this around because. You you can't tell us that something else is dangerous when we know that Bitcoin like Bitcoin's not some evil mechanism like it transfers value around the world uh, for everyone to be able to use like we know now we do not need actual intermediaries to be able to help us send money around the world because we've seen that Bitcoin and Litecoin and Ethereum and Cardano have collectively all worked for around a good 12 years or so so uh I, I, I love news like this. This and like really stupid weird news like the like the the what's the one that we had last week where uh the cops in Poland uh tried to arrest this guy because they thought he was illegally mining Bitcoin because he had like I think like two hundred uh, PS4s and lo and behold he was uh he was trying to get free soccer tokens for a FIFA game and it's like you guys have nothing else to do. Anyway, 
that's the don't use crypto because it's not as as safe as us news when i mean stop it I'm, have you ever looked watch a documentary i mean really just like sit sit down and watch documentaries on these things because you're going to be like you, you'll also laugh at this news story because you know like all the other stuff that's happening not even behind the scenes like right in your face anyway that's that news and let's move. Some of the news here is so really weird. Like, and I and I don't get how it even makes headlines. If I can even say that completely, it just really. For those of you who weren't here a couple of years ago, there was a situation where all these um, what what, what do you call it? Uh, some of the heads of I I believe it was the Central Bank of Russia. Uh, they were trying to propose a law that said that basically, if you were poor, you couldn't buy any crypto. They were trying to put it as a um. Basically, you could only invest in Bitcoin. This was a proposal. You could only invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum if you were an accredited investor or an institutional investor and you had shown before that you were able to, like you knew markets, basically. So they basically worded it as if you were rich, then you can get into crypto. And then they changed that to, okay, fine. If you're poor, you can also get into it. But there was like a $3,000 equivalent per year. And it's like, so they can invest millions into something that you know is probably going to go to six figures, but everyday normal people can only do a max of three thousand per year, and it's like, what are you? It's so you can't know. It's just no. I, anyway, cool. Let's move on. Also, in sure, why not? A new stable coin pegged to the value of the Chilean Ch wow Chilean peso is now live on Stellar but is yet to prove popular with users. Um, I don't even have to read any more of this. This was also, it's not that it was popular, it's just more of a clarification. Um, there's a lot of stablecoin news nearly all the time. I don't bring it to you because I'm certain, you know, a lot of you are not foaming at the mouth when I talk about um, stablecoins. But a lot of times it's like stablecoin news and it's like, well, the coin hasn't caught on. Is it because of the network? No, I'm pretty sure Stellar is just fine. It's more of a, it's a Chilean peso stablecoin. Who was asking for that? Like, if, if on any given day we maybe have, I'm going to say 25,000 people, rough estimate, I don't know the exact number, maybe using Tether or the USDC coin or the one that came from Coinbase, how many people are actually going to be like, oh gosh, they finally have a Chilean peso stablecoin. I've been waiting for this for so long. Like, you know, I can't wait to transact. No, like you would transact in the most stable stable coins, and that's how you keep the, the stable value so yeah it says the the, the stable coin has a limited volume of twelve thousand dollars because it's the chilean peso like stop making stable coins of everything it just doesn't make any sense like anyway there's a gigantic ant walking down the street with a coin and no one is noticing i feel like that would really I think I'd have a really weird day after that. Imagine like opening up your window and you just see a gigantic coin walking with an ant. Anyway, that's the, at least it's sunny there. That's the Chilean peso news because once again, no, like it's just people like this has happened all the time. Like there was also something last year where some companies were making all these like um African currency stable coins and they were like, it's just not working. And it's like, what? <laughs> who on any given day is like, well, you know, dude. I got to have that currency as part of my portfolio. If it's stable relative to their currency, it's going to also be garbage. Like, what, what are people not getting about that? Like, you can, yeah, sure, you can have it stable relative to their value, but if the value keeps going down, the value of the stable coin is also going to be dropping as well. Anyway, that's that. Just think, like, half a second, just kind of think a bit further. Like, everything doesn't have to be digitized. Like, you know, this is even why... When we had news, I think it was 2019, uh, where it was it was Chinese and, and, and Russian banks, governments or whatever, they were really annoyed because people were using the US dollar or the Tether stable coins like to transact in value back and forth. So if they were leaving from Russia into China, they didn't have to swap their local currency in paper. They were simply just using Tether back and forth. It makes sense because the US dollar is the world's leading currency at the moment. So just therefore, just everyone just transact in Tether or some other equivalent to the US dollar. You don't need, you know, why why have a Russian stable coin in a in a yen stable coin and then you still have to transfer them as you're going across the border? Like I just one one step further, like always think just a little bit more. Anyway, sure. That's the gigantic ant news. And let's move on. 
Oh, oh, also in one of my favorite news stories of, of, of the year, maybe the millennium, because it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it says, forget Elon Musk. Dogecoin's latest patron is none other than the soul legend Dion Warwick. If you have no idea who that is, I don't blame you because she's very, she, it's not even that she's niche. It's just not many people would know who exactly Dion Warwick was. The walk on by singer is set to headline Doja Palooza, a festival that will celebrate all things Doge. Confused? So am I. Doge Palooza, which will take place in the middle, multiple cities and countries around the globe, will kick off on the 9th of October in Sugarland, Texas, according to its website. As well as spreading mainstream adoption of the coin, the, fe <laughs> the festival, which will include live music, educational venues for learning about Dogecoin, and food and drink. Oh, thank goodness the food and drink is there. We'll help change the world by embracing and living the Doge motto of do only good every day. Are they serious? Dogecoin or Doge is a cryptocurrency that was created in 2013 as a joke, but people completely are falling over themselves for this coin, and I still can't figure out why. Uh, just to be completely clear about all this, at some point, Dogecoin could go to a dollar. It could go to three dollars. Shiba Inu could also hit a cent. It could go to five cents. It could go to ten cents. No one knows what's going to happen with any of these prices, so I, 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 I dare not even say it out loud. It's just more of a Dion Warwick is the headliner for Doge Palooza. Does Dion Warwick own Bitcoin, uh, Dogecoin? Is she a cryptocurrency investor? Are people... You know what? I won't even lie. If I was in Sugarland, Texas, and I knew that there was going to be a Dogecoin festival, and Dion Warwick was going to be there, I think I'd kind of go just to... For, like, morbid curiosity. Isn't that... Like, remember... like This was, like, two or three years ago. There was a Ripple event, and and I think Bill Clinton was there. And I sat there, and I was like... What? Who cares that Bill Clinton is throwing his support behind Ripple? And I sat there and I was like, imagine how weird that would be to sit in a room with other people listening to Bill Clinton not know what he's talking about for Ripple. I think I'd probably go. I guess it works. Good job, Dion Warwick. So the news is, um, here's the actual website right here. Just fantastic. Um, if any of you are going to go to this, please tell me because I would love uh, for you to send me some videos and or... Uh, photos on my Twitter because look at this. Is is it gonna look like this? There's a, there's a Dogecoin with laser eyes floating above the entire stage. I just I'm not. Is he holding a guitar? He's holding a guitar. Oh boy. Um. I don't even know where to go from this. I don't even. So this is definitely happening. I think it's what was it? The 9th of October. Yep, 9th of October in 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 Sugar. I don't know if it's Sugar Land or Sugarland. You know, depending on. Where you're from in the States, uh, sometimes words are connected and sometimes they're not connected. Anyway, so entertain... Oh my gosh. Okay. It says entertainment artists are to be determined, uh, but will be much wow. I'm really hoping for like a Beyonce. I'm hoping for like... Um, what's the guy from Earth, Wind, and Fire? That'd be kind of cool. Um, Miley Cyrus's sister would also be kind of entertaining. Um, Shaka Khan would be kind of cool as well. Um... Gene Simmons' dog would also... I'm, I'm assuming he has dogs. Anyway, because, you know, it's, it's Dogecoin, so therefore that has to... All right, that's the Dogecoin, Dogepalooza. Dion Warwick? Are you kidding me? How did that conversation even happen? Did they go to... D how do you... How did, what happened? What happened? Did these people knock on Dion Warwick's door? Say, hey, hey, Miss Warwick, uh, you know Dogecoin? And she's like, a Doge what? You wanna you wanna sing for us on stage? How much are they paying this woman? Does she know what she's even going to? Dion, does no one else see this? All right, I'm just gonna. It's just me then, because I don't understand anymore. All right, let's move on. Oh boy. Next up, also in the news. Oh. <laughs> Do you understand? That's like that's like having Stevie Wonder going to like a like a Cardano event. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. Over, oh boy, over half of the 100 largest banks in the world by assets under management. I'm holding back a laugh. Reportedly have exposure to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. 
through projects in this space, according to a newly published report. The report, published by Block Data, first reported by Cointelegraph, reveals global banking giants have been increasing their involvement in the cryptocurrency space through early and late stage funding of projects and businesses in the industry. It details that 55 of the top 100 banks have exposure to crypto. What? That's crazy. These financial institution involvements in the cryptocurrency space reportedly encompass direct and indirect investments <laughs> made by the institutions themselves or through subsidiaries, like I told you before. Uh, the report names Barclays, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs among the most active in the space, followed by JP Morgan and BNP Paribas. Um, not really much a lot to say here, just because it's simple, it's simple, you know, just logic. And, I, and, and I'd even go further to assume, assumption time, that out of those 100 banks, it's probably 100 banks that have exposure to cryptocurrencies. I highly doubt that JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs are in crypto and everyone else was like, well, let's just see where this goes. I want to see what happens to the space in five years. No. With the moment they announced that they got into the space, every other bank also got into it as well. Between subsidiaries and also indirect exposure. They're all into crypto. They're all into Bitcoin. They're all holding it in some sort of way. Or they are helping to mine it or they have a staking. and it's, it's always something. But the fact that we know that mathematically and also uh, regulatorily... Meaning like, you know, they had to file with the SEC or something like that in some sort of way or their SEC uh, that at least 55 out of 100 is there. It's safe to assume that crypto is here to stay and, and Bitcoin will definitely be going to those brand new heights relatively soon. Anyway, that's the obvious news for you. Don't know how to categorize that one. It's simply because, you know, logic. And here's the go away. And here's the um, the block the the block data people who were doing the actual investment news bank news stuff. I don't know what I'm saying. The point is the people who were looking for this information. Here's their page. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters: Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Empire Queen, Stake It with Valor. Fud, Wiser, Mortified, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben, Arachno, Dave, Tony, Ambroski, The Dealers, Dan, Red, Plump, Tomato, Umnu, Wish, Nikki, The Letter, M, Stefan, Dirks, Not Brain, Captain, Something, in the Z-Way, Lay, Crypto, Black Sheep, AJ, Cut, 5, Speedy, 655, and Carlos was like, Mo Barazzi, Jojo, Shaw, Show, VB, Nerd, 21, Miguel, Grow, Lay, Lauren, De Silva, Quoted, Biddy, Bare, Bones, Mining, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat, Her, Noster, Conan, No Skip, Leg Day, Snacky, Chan, Tolik, Banano, Spicious, Agile, and Blockchain, of Evaro Williams, I said that right, David James, Attila, The Han, Yasha, Harari, Utopia, 569, Moonman, High, XRP, Martin, Stroyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Anima Reader, Abibiophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasic, Mo, Hermione, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jarish, Shadow, Wise Knight, Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie, Richie, Third, Landy, and Paler, Paxis, Nick, Manji, Lavori, Jim Garner, Jamie Fox, Minton, Coins, Miller, His Chest, Everyday, and Kalski, Plague, The Yes to Crypto, Buttermick, Buttface, Anytime, Finish, Smart, Scrunner, Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, and Macho, Nisa, On Crypto, with Lana, Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Bolero, Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who has supported the channel in their own way. I do thank thee. Yeah, okay, it makes sense. I, I Thank you very much. At the memento, Bitcoin is up by 3.58%. Is at 47,377 US dollars. Ethereum is currently at my 3.5%. Binance coin is, geez Louise, at $420, up by 5%. Cardano is currently up by 6% as well. It is at $2.17. Fantastic. Absolutely wonderful to see. I'm expecting that we're going to try and aim for a $3 relatively soon, but I still think we'll have like a, a lull period just because the market is always doing this. XRP is up by 5%. It is at $1.30. Dogecoin is currently up by 17%. Polkadot is up by 10.95. Uniswap is up by 6%. Solana is up by, geez Louise. Solana is up by 43% right now. Chainlink is up by 12. Litecoin is up by 5. Ethereum Classic is up by 7. Lumens is up by 6%. VeChain Thor is up by 11. Luna Terra Luna is up by 30%. Jeez Louise. Matic is up by 11. Theta is up by 15%. Tron is up by four. EOS is up by twelve. We might, are we getting? I, I think we're getting close to bullish. The actual uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Ave is up 
by 6%. Monero is up by 6%. FTT is up by 10%. Clay Clayton is up by 12%. Pancake Swap is up by 8 The Graph is up by 9 Neo is up. We have, wow, I haven't said the word Neo in a long time. Neo is up by 11%. Axis is up by 7 Anything else crazy? Shiba Inu is up by 8 Avalanche is up by 12 Iota is up by 8 Algorand is up by 8 Doo -doo -boo 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 -boo. Compound is up by 12 And yeah. All righty. Uh, I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, and supporting. And I will. I love. I love swinging in this chat. I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen throughout the video. I'm constantly just like swinging back and forth. It's it's really weird. Like I never used to do this before, but I realize it's like super relaxing just to kind of like swing as I'm talking. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See?